<laughs> so for those of you who are tuning in right now, I'm sadly, like the workout started in, so incredibly, but I'm having the worst connection ever of my life. It froze 15 times. I don't understand why. I turned my Wi-Fi off and on and phone and not phone. But anyways, we're going to redo the workout portion because it was so good. And this towel is fucking deadly. Um, I <laughs> like was literally killing me. I'm like, oh my God, I can't use this towel. And this was really interesting to have like a book or like a pillow on your foot for side leg kicks, something that I haven't done before. So um, for everybody who's tuning in or tuned in late or like lost the first live and you're like, where's the second live? This is Nina Nareshko and she's a fabulous classical instructor who looks fabulous as well. Um, based out of Rancho Cucamonga, California. So, <laughs> so what you saw was a really small snippet of what she is capable of and we will certainly redo it. Um, and I'm sorry to those of you who weren't able to see the full thing, but um, it is also better for me because I was literally so stressed. I started like dripping sweat and now yeah. and you were focusing on what we were doing. You were just like hoping the whole time the internet doesn't give out again. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, well, it's just the weirdest thing I have been like, it's so it's bizarre. I just can't figure it out. Maybe because I wasn't like, I have no clue. It doesn't matter. But yeah. either way, if you were watching, you saw like it just disconnected a hundred, a hundred times. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a seamless workout by any means, but we will re-record it, I promise, and you guys will be able to do it. And I think it's really unique because towel and prop, a uh, book as props are things we all have at home. So it's a great yeah. thing to use right now, especially during COVID when people are like stuck, not in the studios, like in California where things are closed still, just like in New York City, correct? Yep. You were able to open briefly, right? And then you had to close. Yeah, we were able to open for about like three weeks and then they were like, oh, just kidding. We have to close back down. Right. And then... Now it's just back to virtual only. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, virtual is the way of the future, as we discussed yesterday. So even though it's so frustrating, it's still, it's still something. Um, better yeah. than it's better than nothing. And I must say, all my clients who have been really good about their mat work have done, um, have been exponentially stronger since since this all occurred. So that's really good. To, yeah, I agree. Because when we did reopen for that short time frame, the clients that came back that were doing that work consistently came back much stronger. Yeah, so, totally. Yeah. Okay, so Nina does not hail from Rancho Cucamonga. She is from the Midwest. So why don't you talk to us about um, how you initially got introduced to Pilates and um, where that journey began for you in Chicago? Sure. It was uh, totally by accident. Um, my dad worked for a real estate company and one of their tenants was the Pilates studio of the Midwest. And so they needed someone just to answer phones and book appointments um, in the evenings. And my dad's like, well, I have a 16 year old kid. She just got her driver's license. If she can sit here and do her homework, she can, you know, answer phones and book appointments. And so that was my first job was just being a receptionist at the Pilates studio after school. Right. And then during summers. So it was totally by accident. I never seeked it out. I never had any interest to it. Actually, for the first few years that I was there, I had no interest in Pilates um, at all. I thought it was really weird and bizarre. <laughs> um, but then being there all the time, especially in the summertime, and it was a certification center that, you know, Romana trained everyone at, um, eventually some of the instructors and, you know, Rhonda Salenza, who uh, was the manager there, was like, well, since you're always here, can you start being a practice body for some of the apprentices for people to just practice on you? And so that was kind of my first introduction to Pilates was sort of being everyone's like guinea pig when I was younger, since I was always around. And then that sort of developed into me then becoming more interested in it and really understanding it and then eventually getting certified in it myself. Awesome. And you certified the program was Romanus Pilates, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how long ago was that? Oh, 10 years ago, I think, was when I finally did it. I was like in my late teens when I started my lessons. And then it took me a long time to finally get there to get certified. But I think having worked in the studio for so long and always just sitting there and observing everything and listening to everything and then watching everyone else as they went through their certification program and their apprenticeship and their testing, I felt like because I was just in that environment for so long, actually going through the certification wasn't that bad because I knew exactly what to expect, what yeah. was expected 
of me and how the program, you know, ran. You knew what you were um, getting yourself into. Yeah. So I, I think just being in that environment for so long, that's why I always tell everyone, you know, don't rush getting into a program, take your lessons, take your time. It'll just be much easier on yourself that way. Right. Yeah. I think that's a good piece of advice. Um, you know, a lot of our trainings have gone on pause because of COVID and, you know, for some people, I think if they were in the middle of a teacher training, it's so frustrating, but at the same time, it's not awful. You know, it gives you this, it buys you a little bit of extra time to sort of really figure out like where, if you were behind, like, okay, now you can catch up. I know it's all virtual, but you have all this extra time to really hone in on your skills. And um, I think at the end of the day, like I said before, these are going to be fabulous math instructors, like the best ones ever <laughs> after all this. So I think mat work is something when you're an apprentice, you kind of let it kind of, it's probably not your primary focus. You know, there's so much yeah. to focus on when you're learning reformer and high chair or just anything that has springs and foot bars and like straps and handles. So I think mat work is sort of something you just like memorize and kind of like keep in the back of your head, like, oh, if I ever need this. But now, I mean, I think they'll be like the most fabulous mat teachers ever. Yep. So you met Romana, right? Yes. And what was that like? Um, or what was well, she like? She was, you know, uh, doing all the training and stuff. You know, I wasn't really taking Pilates at that time, but she was just a wonderful energy to be around. And I always remembered she always liked to do everything in the morning. So I always had to be there like super early to open up everything for her. Mm -hmm. And I am not a morning person. So that was like the worst thing ever. But she just had this great energy and this great presence. And she just made everything just feel so natural and simple and um you know I remembered her she just always had this wonderful way of just even listening to her teach of simplifying you know Pilates you know and and I just remember her saying I don't ask you to do anything but move dear just move right um she made it really simple and just you know beautiful and um one thing I remember her always saying is you you have to learn something new each day um, and that's something that I always ask my clients after each one of their lessons. I always ask them, what did you learn today? Um, cause that was important to her. You know, I remember her saying that a lot. What did you learn today? Mm -hmm. Um, you're supposed to learn something every single day and every time you do one of your lessons. Right. Right. Um, Celia Jones posted a video the other day. She actually sent it to me and I watched a portion of it. Um, it was an interview. I actually don't remember his name right now. I feel bad. <laughs> yes. I think with Alyssa Wyatt from Pilatesology. Right. And um, so he was basically in the interview, he was crediting Romana as really having brought Pilates, not to the mainstream necessarily, but, but just like for broadening, broadening the audience because she traveled like all over the country and she really had this yeah. teacher training and she, you know, I, I had the Catronis on earlier this summer and they were with Mari Windsor, but it wasn't until Romana came out to Mari's studio and like put them through an actual like 600 hour teacher training that they learned like the structure and the form, like in a by the book standard. And I do think that that's why so many instructors now come from this like Romana lineage, because it really was like one of the first, like more regimented programs um, that people kind of sought for their Pilates instruction. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. Do, what, how do you feel about his statement? Do you agree? I, yeah. She, I mean, she worked her butt off. She traveled a lot. She was all over the place. Cause I remember too, like, you know, working on the office side of things, I was trying to coordinate her schedule and get things going and lined up and everything. I mean, it was, you know, it was a lot of work, but right. I mean, she, she worked hard. She was like just this endless ball of energy. You know, she, she could just keep going and going and going. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wish that I had had the opportunity to meet her, but at least I'm carrying on her legacy in some sense, <laughs> which is so true. Okay, so how long have you now lived in California and what brought you to California from the Midwest? Uh, seven years. Um, so I originally moved out here. Um, my boyfriend and I were doing the long distance thing for three years and it got to a point where That's someone had time. to move. Yeah. And uh, he's already lived in Chicago. He's done the brutal winters. He didn't want to deal with that again. Um, and I never really lived outside of Chicago. So I was like, okay, well, I'll move and experience, you know, living someplace different. And right. so that's how I, California. Cool. And do you like yeah. it? 
Um, yes and no. I do miss seasons. Like it never really feels like Christmas. It never really yeah. feels like fall. It just feels really weird not having it. But I mean, again, it is nice to not have to put on 16 layers of clothes and dig your car out to go grocery shopping. So, right. you know, it has its, it has its. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. Yeah. I think yeah. there's, it's like, there's a whole list of pros and cons for the West coast and for California. Um, specifically but I think the having summer type weather all year round would probably be a pro for most people um, I remember when I did my semester there I complained about the nice weather and people were like you're crazy but I was like I just want it to rain like I would just I just want a rainy day <laughs> yeah that's what I always say I miss seasons and I miss weather <laughs> yeah I know and especially in LA I was like because you know New Yorkers were so good at using a, a weather as an excuse for something like oh, it's raining today. Like, I don't think I'll do anything. Literally, I might not even roll out of bed. But <laughs> like, you don't have that excuse in California. Um, okay, so but in California, you opened up your own studio, which is where we are right now. It's not a zoom background as much as it looks like it might be. Um, and uh, talk to us about your studio. So when I first moved here, um, you know, a lot of our classical studios are out in the LA area, um, and Pasadena area, nothing really close to here. So I, I really well, first of all, just for my own selfish reasons, right? I really missed the classical environment. So I'm like, okay, I need to get a studio going around here. Um, and then again, it was kind of a no brainer because I really wanted to um, bring it to the people in this area here who didn't have a chance to experience, you know, the classical um, version of Pilates. Right. Um, so it just kind of happened because, you know, in the, Pilates industry out here where I lived, there was none of that. So I really was like, okay, I need to put this together. So is there a lot of other Pilates there? Like more, I guess, contemporary? Um, there's a few studios around here. Not a lot, not super saturated. Um, so it's kind of nice because we're not overly saturated with the Pilates. Mm -hmm. um, but again, there wasn't anything classical. And again, for me being trained that way, you know, I, I don't really... Um, thrive in any, as a teacher, any kind of environment other than, you know, what I'm trained to do and right. what I know best. Right. So did you have any clients that come to you, that came to you or have come to you from a different sort of Pilates background and then you kind of transition them over to classical? Yes. Some of them I actually taught at a contemporary studio um, when I first moved here before I opened up my studio. And I actually taught from home for a few years before I opened up um, the studio. And some of them kind of followed along mm -hmm. um, and uh, moved um, on with me. Um, and, you know, they they enjoyed the difference. Um, and Pilates, actually, one of my clients that was on here. Oh, yeah, there she is. Pilates Hotties. She was one of my clients at the contemporary studio. Oh, then in my house. Um, now she lives in Boston and she's oh. certified classical and is an instructor for Equinox. Oh, cool. And so, yeah. That's awesome. Well, actually, speaking of Pilates Hotties, um, I don't know her first name, but she submitted, Sam. okay, she submitted some questions for you. So since okay. you brought her up, it's a great transition to talk about the questions. So one of her, she has two questions. So the first one was, is there any piece of apparatus that you don't have in the studio that you wish that you did have? Uh, the only piece of apparatus that, uh, there's two that I don't have, um, the guillotine, um, and then the other piece that I don't have that I wish I had is the Swedish bars. Okay. Um, which I think we're actually thinking of throwing up on that wall somewhere in the corner or something. Yeah. Um, so that's the one that I really, really, really wish I had, you know, the back of the ladder barrel kind of acts as your little mini Swedish bars, but it's not the same. Right. So, yeah that um i don't have and i wish that i had cool yeah we got the the guillotine the guillotine out and really know how to pronounce it um at real plotties tribeca like a year ago probably like a year and a half ago and i had never we had one in our old studio location but i had never really used it because i hadn't been trained on it because it wasn't a part of our teacher training so we did this whole like weekend long workshop and learned like what we what to do you know like how to work out on the guillotine and it was so cool i mean i think one of the coolest things about it is you know the fact that the bar is uneven and spring loaded in different ways um really shows you all of your imbalances in such an obvious way so that was a really cool thing to, i hope that i remember it <laughs> i haven't taught on it in so long at this point <laughs> i'm like i'm gonna go back to the studio i'm gonna need to take another workshop which is funny 
Um, okay, so she asked you a second question as well. And I don't know what you have in your studio. So, but she asked you whether you prefer Graz apparatus or Pilates designs and why? Um, both. <laughs> um, you know, I... <laughs> I prefer, I mean, both, you know, to me, they're, they're equally great brands right. and, um, and, you know, I usually just gravitate more towards Grotz cause that's what I was, you know, like taught on, Pilates, but I was kind of raised on. Yeah. Um, and, and I have a great relationship with them and a great connection with them. Um, and so I always gravitate, um, towards using, um, them, um, and also to, you know, they've just been, they've just been great to, to work with and responsive and, have made tweaks and adjustments to certain apparatus as I needed it. And, right. Um, you know, so I appreciate them and, you know, I love their work and their maintenance. And I mean, the equipment that I have from them, all my reformers are from them. Um, and, you know, I've never had to repair, fix, do anything with them. They're great, solid pieces of equipment. I think people who follow me and who've seen these man chats think that maybe I'm like, I'm only like Grotz, like, you know, like not pro. I mean, I am pro Grotz, but that like Grotz is the only way, but that's, that's definitely not how I feel. Like people message me all the time. And they're like, are there any other um, brands that you would recommend? And yes, a thousand percent. Like even though Grotz got in the game is the game, you know, like there are people that have left Grotz, like Basil, I think like makes great apparatus. I mean, he was at Grotz now spun off. He's his own thing. Um, and I think Pilates designs, like there's a lot of people making classical apparatus. I don't think that it's necessarily like one or one is better than the other. And sometimes, you know, funding, sometimes it's timeline. Yeah. Um, you know, I got my two towers from Pilates designs when I moved into the studio because with getting my permits from the city, all of a sudden, like everything yeah. started moving so quickly that I had to get my right. equipment excited and they were able to do it faster. You know, much quicker and stuff so sometimes it depends on location timing finances you know convenience so you know you can't go wrong with it as long as it's a good reputable source no totally agreed and I also um I have not had the opportunity to try the control G reformer by balanced body but I know that that's their attempt at like taking everything back to the more classical um the more classical builds you know as opposed to like the wider taller balanced body reformers that they traditionally make. And so I think it's cool. I think that people are kind of, you know, there's a trend back to archival and I, I like that. I think it's important. Yeah. Really important. Um, okay. Yeah, I, so uh, also yesterday we talked about clients and like managing client expectations and what it's like when you're like a small business owner and you have your own little studio and just like what it can be like to work with clients who potentially um, want to be the boss of their session. <laughs> um, yeah. um, <laughs> we've yeah, all dealt tough, with it. We've all dealt with um, it. You know, sometimes I let them, you know, um, like one of my clients who does that, we kind of compromise. Um, some days, you know, he comes in quite frequently. So some days he gets to be the boss of the session and tell me kind of what he's looking for and needs. And then other days I'm like, okay, well now it's my turn. You know, you called the shots last time. Now I'm calling the shots. So, you know, you kind of compromise because you have to give them what they want to if you're not meeting their expectation right. sometimes. And sometimes they don't know enough about Pilates to know what they should be connecting to or expecting. Right. Um, so, you know, it happens a lot with newer clients, I think, because Pilates is so cerebral yeah. um, and so much mind. You know, I always tell them the moving and the exercise part is the easy part. It's what I'm asking your brain to do that's the challenging part and that's the real work. And so it happens a lot where clients are like, oh, I don't feel anything on this exercise. Yeah. Well, you know, don't keep harping on it and repeating it. You know, you got to present it to them a different way right. or you got to leave it alone for that time and wait for that connection to build up and then revisit that exercise. Or otherwise you're just going to lose them, you know, as a client. I think that that, it's funny that you say that because I think that phrase, like, I'm not feeling anything or combined with or substituted with, where am I supposed to feel this? Or like, this feels really easy. Like, oh, I think those are like the most frustrating phrases because as a Pilates instructor, your immediate like clapback wants to be, that's because you're not doing it right. But you can't say that to a client. Yeah. So you yeah. always have to like and try and- tell, like, That's okay. And yeah. I, you know, I have a perfect example of that. And I always ask you, because I'm sure you've experienced it. 
Has there been an exercise that you've done that took you years to connect to? Yes. Where all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's what that's supposed to feel like, right? So I had a client who did that on like circle. She's like, I don't like these. These are so annoying. Why do I have to do these every time? I'm like, because I promise you one day they'll make sense. Right. And so it took about five years. And then all of a sudden one day she's on the mat and she's doing her circle and it like just looks beautiful and perfect. And she sits up and she's like, oh, so that's what that's supposed to feel like. Right. But it took like four years before it made sense. You know, one of my clients literally has been doing Pilates for like 10 years and she just found that lower C curve on her open leg rocker um, last Saturday. Yeah. Um, and her open leg rocker like looked stunning and she's still excited about it. So it just, so I always tell them just be patient. You know, this is a journey, not a destination. You're not going to be advanced and do things right away. Um, so just, you know, give them tidbits of things. Don't overdo it if they're not cognitively connecting to it. Right. Um, visit certain things and it'll all kind of fall into place on its own over time. Totally. Yeah, that's great advice. I feel similarly like I have clients who you can describe it, you know, you every every which way you can give them visual cues, tactile cues. You can do every single thing and it still doesn't, for whatever reason, doesn't, they don't find that in themselves. But I had a few, I've had a few clients where I see a video or they've seen videos of me and I'll send it to them and be like, this is what we were trying to work on. Like watch someone do it. And I think sometimes just seeing how someone moves sort of like puts it in their body in a different form. Like I did have a client, an open leg rocker and she was just trying so hard and she just wasn't connecting in the correct way. And I guess I had a video of me doing it and she watched it and she was like, I saw what you were doing. And now I'm trying to do that. I'm like, yes, that's it. And then she got it. And it's um, like, yeah. so and amazing. Clients do sometimes during their sessions is videotape themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, set up a camera somewhere, set up their phone somewhere yeah. and then go home and watch. They're like, oh my God, I don't want to look at it. I look so gross. I'm like, I don't care what you look like. I need you to look at your form and I need you to like listen to what I'm saying and what your body's doing and use it as a tool, you know, right. because, um, you know, some, I'm sure you have it too with clients. Sometimes they get stuck and they're not really progressing, right? Oh, yeah. They're not really thinking about what they're doing. And I'm like, so you need to go home and you need to watch this so that you start to understand because some, and I'm sure it happens to me too. Like your instructor will be like, okay, lengthen your spine. And you think it's lengthened and you look in the mirror and you're like, what the crap is that? I, you know? yes. so, my little Montauk well, studio the same doesn't. Same thing. Like you need to video it and you need to review it because if you want to progress and achieve more, it's all dependent on the work that you put in. I can totally. guide you through it, but I can't do it for you. Right. So when I, clients who are complaining about not progressing I'm like well that's all on you buddy that's not me um you know and then they're like okay okay I get it I'm like so if you can check in a little bit more I can make you progress right 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 you know yeah. and then the other thing too, that's sometimes challenging with clients and I have one like that she'll come in four times a week right and physically her body is changing really slowly and she comes in one day and she's like all right I'm ready to do more I'm ready to do more advanced things and I'm like well, crap, you can't. Like, your body's not physically there yet. ready for it. That's not right. happening. So then you have to, as a teacher, get creative and just literally give them what they know right. in different ways so they think they're doing something different. Yeah. Until physically they can catch up to being able to do more. Right. I think that's important. It's so important to also keep clients in their lane. Um, Carmen Lantain described that she had clients who basically kind of she felt like she got bullied into advancing them because they were like, I want to do more. Like, I'm ready for this. And so she kind of let them. But then you, she realized when she started doing the exercise, the example she gave was one of something from rowing. She looked and was like, oh, my God, they're so not ready to be here. But that happens a lot. And I think um, it's important that we keep our clients like at the pace they're supposed to be at. You know, they think that they can advance sometimes when they really shouldn't. And so if there's a way to advance them by breaking down a more advanced exercise and teaching them those building blocks, then great. Yes. But otherwise it doesn't necessarily mean. Um... Yeah. And that's where your kind of teacher hat comes on. And I have this great list that Cynthia Lachard put together for us a few years back is basically, you know, as a teacher, when you're watching someone struggle with a certain exercise, your brain right away should be going, okay, we need yeah. to work on X, Y, and Z to yeah. help them get this better. And so it's this great list that she made for us. If a client is struggling with this on the reformer, everything else that you're doing in the studio to help them do that. And then two, going back to advancing clients, you know, something that my teacher Rhonda Salenza said one time that really resonates with when it comes to advancing clients is there's nothing new that you learn in advanced. 
Right. Like concept wise, all the right. concept yes. um, of bodies. You already, you learn all of that in basic and intermediate. Totally. There's nothing you learn in advance. The only thing that happens in advance is you put, put it, it together. into more complex and challenging right. scenarios. Right. So if you're struggling with the concept in basic or intermediate, it's going to get even worse if you advance them too soon. Yeah. So that's what she always says when you're thinking about advancing your clients is what concepts do they still need to work on? And yeah. those are the elements that you don't give them advanced work in yet. Right. Totally. And I think, you know, I always say that sometimes I'll be teaching now, especially to the mat. And if I'm going to teach boomerang that day, I'll make sure that we've done a rollover. I'll make sure that we've already done some rowing and I'll make sure that we've done a teaser. And then by the time we get to boomerang, I'm like, you've done every single part of this already. Like, let's just put it together. You know, by the end of the workout, you should be ready to, to mesh these together to form that exercise. Because I mean, boomerang is an advanced exercise on the mat, at least in my opinion. And now that the body's prepared by doing all these other exercises, like let's go there. I mean, it's so interesting. That's why I love how systematic Pilates is because you can see all these building blocks for these advanced exercises. And you think, oh, okay, like this is just this plus that, you know, it's really, really so special. And that's like the genius of, of Pilates, really. That's yeah. great. Um, okay, yeah. so I'm gonna go into the this or that speed round. I yeah. left my computer uh, over there, but I think I've asked it enough by now that I should have them memorized, even if it's not in the correct order. So at least we'll have it because um, I, I think it's so, sort of fun. So usually I'm looking down like this or that, um, but I'll just come back and refer to the, the live when I go to transcribe it later. But so I know it starts with city or beach. City. Are you cat or dog? Both. Both? Do you have both? I, you're, I thought you were going to say dogs for sure. No, I have both. Okay, got it. It's okay to be both. I respect that. Um, books or movies? Books. Adventure or comfort? Adventure. Are you nights in or nights out? Nights in. Are you sweet or savory? Sweet. Are you an early bird or a night owl? Early bird-ish. <laughs> I understand that. Um, let's see. Pizza or pasta? Pizza. Spring or fall? Fall. Summer or winter? Not that you have. Winter. Oh, now she's saying winter because she misses now it that so I much. Not that I have it anymore. I miss it. <laughs> I feel you. Are you Europe or Asia? Uh, Europe. And then I think the last one is breakfast or dinner? Breakfast. Awesome. So the early bird likes her breakfast. It makes sense. They go hand in hand. <laughs> Okay, there might have been one I missed, but if there is, I will definitely, um, I will definitely circle back and get that, oh. get that answer for you. But so, for those of you who are tuning in or did tune in late, the workout, I don't know why there hasn't been a single issue during this, by the way. Couldn't tell you. It's just like how technology oh. works. But I'm glad that there wasn't, because that would have been even more frustrating. But so, there was many issues when we first logged on with the workout portion. So, even though I did get a really fabulous scattered paused workout we're going to re-record it we'll go live again i'll talk to tina about a time that works for her just yeah. so that you guys can see because it was really unique like i said earlier we had a towel and we had a book or like a pillow um and it was really great to be able to use these props because everybody has them at home and i think everybody's looking for more creative ways to to teach their clients or teach themselves or challenge themselves right now so we will re-record that so when this gets posted to my That's story like those as props for yourself right yeah and the other thing with the book is when you're doing your ab series place the book behind you to like where your lift is supposed to be in your upper spine oh. and then as you're doing your ab series make sure that you don't Touch let yourself book. Lose form and yeah that book. love it um because that's the other thing too is when we're working independently on our own sometimes we need that little bit of you know feedback right um to let us know you know because that's the thing too like uh, you know going back to teaching and all that kind of getting off on a tangent is using the tools that we have you know in the right way yeah. Um, you know, like it drives me crazy with the magic circle because I think the magic circle is like abused the wrong way. You know, like people just see people just squeezing the crap out of it. Um, you know, but really, honestly, most of the time you're supposed to only be holding the circle lightly right. and then squeezing it as you need that assistance into your internal spring. Um, but you know, I could talk about that forever. <laughs> Oh, right. Um, but that's, you know, I, I think that's important too, is whatever tools that we have around the house or with us, you know, really know how to get the best out of them 
to go deeper into the exercise, not just like, oh, this is a different way to do something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think for sure that the beauty of a prop is that you have all of these, um, they're feedback tools. So I think right then and there you get like everything hopefully that you need from the prop and then you can learn from it. So yep. for sure. Um, yep. Like Ramana said, you got to learn something new every day. So sometimes you got to give yourself the tools to, you know, find that lesson for that. Exactly. Day. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, Nina, thank you so much for bearing with me, my Wi-Fi, <laughs> my cell service, my terrible, everything awful, every whatever my sweat, my anxiety, my stress. <laughs> um, we will definitely find a time to re-record the mat work for everybody because I really want to have that live up there for you. But otherwise, um, we were going to sign off of this. Thank you so much for Thank all you. of your insights. And I will text you after this. But yes. um, enjoy, right. enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Thank you so much. Right. Bye. Bye.